Thanks for coming to watch the second ulnar lesson. In this lesson we go through multiplication and division of whole numbers, some questions on rates, and a question to do with difference in time. There are lots of different skills and questions presented on our YouTube channel which will assist you with your ulnar, and it would greatly assist us too if you subscribe to our channel. Thanks very much and we hope you get great benefit from what's coming up. It's suggested that you have a go at these first four questions for yourself by pausing here and then watch the solutions that follow after this slide. In the first question we have a look at some basic multiplication and it is strongly recommended that you know your multiplication tables for honour. Now if you feel a little bit behind in that respect just take your time there are some strategies there to help you but it's something that will improve progressively a little bit each time that you go through and you rehearse and practice your times tables. One way you can do that if you get stuck is to remember what multiplication tables actually mean. Working out 6 multiplied by 4 is 6 lots of 4 so we can work through our 4 times table by adding 4 to 4. So we can see here all the multiples of 4 and we're adding 4 each time. And that might take a little bit of time but it's one good way to be sure of your 4 times table and to practice it at the same time. So eventually we get down to 6 lots of 4. By working down this list we're practicing our 4 times table until we get to 6 4s are equal to 24. If we look at the first few multiples of the 5 times table we see an interesting pattern. 1 multiplied by 5 is going to give us 5, 2 5s are 10, and 3 5s are 15. The numbers will always end in 5 or 0. If we continue to work down this list, we'll see that 10 5s are 50, we add 5 to get 11 5s are 55, and 12 5s are 60. So 12 multiplied by 5 is 60. Now we could work through a similar list of the multiples of 3, and we'll get that 8 3s are equal to... 24. So this is a good way to go through and practice your multiplication tables if you get stuck, is to actually list the multiples by continually adding the number, like in the first case we added 4s all the way through to get 6 4s at 24. Let's have a look at some multiplication now with digits that are similar to the first problem we had, but this time we've got some extra zeros involved. So here we've got a 6 and a 4 like before, and we can multiply 6 by 4 to get 24. Now the zero at the end is interesting. The simple way to do this problem is to say because there's an extra zero at the end, we can place a zero at the end of our result. So the answer is 240. But the question is why is that? Well 60, remember, is 6 times 10. So what we can do is write 6 multiplied by 4 and then put the multiply by 10. 6 4s are 24 and then we multiply by 10. And an easy pattern to remember when multiplying by 10 is we place a 0 at the end of the number that we had previously. OK, so let's look at our next one. It's 12 multiplied by 50, but we'll do 12 multiplied by 5 first, which we know previously is 60. And now what we'll do is we'll place a 0 at the end of the 5, and that extra 0 will go on the right-hand side of our answer. So 12 times 50 is 600. Likewise with the next problem, we can do 8 multiplied by 3 and that equals 24. And any zeros at the end we'll place afterwards and place it at the end of our solution as well. So 80 times 3 becomes 240. So we can do that if multiplying by numbers which have zeros at the extreme right hand side of the number. We can just place it at the end of our solution. Let's use that same idea to work out this multiplication which is 60 multiplied by 400. 6 multiplied by 4 is 24. And then we have some zeros on the right hand side. So we've got 60 with one zero, 400 with two. So we'll write those down. And the result will still be 24, but followed with three zeros. So let's have a look at why that is. We can split 60 and 400 into six multiplied by four. Then we have six times 10 will give us 60, and four times 100 will give us 400. So there's our multiplication spread out. 6 4s are 24, and we're still multiplying by 10 and 100. So our final result will have 24 with 1 0 because we're multiplying by 10, and 2 zeros because we're multiplying by 100, and that gives us 24,000. In our next question, we've got a couple of zeros, one after the 12, one after the 5. 
12 multiplied by 5 is 60. And then we've got 120, that's one extra zero, and 50, another zero at the right-hand side. So that 60 has two extra zeros at the right-hand side, giving us an answer of 6,000. Let's look at the next one. We've got eight and two zeros and three and one zero. Eight multiplied by three will give us 24. And then we've got an extra two zeros at the right-hand side of the eight, an extra zero after the three, and that will give us three extra zeros after the 24. So our answer will be 24,000. In the first question, what we'll do is ignore the zeros for the moment and just look at six multiplied by four. We know that six fours are 24. Now we have a zero at the right hand side of the 40. That's like multiplying by 10. So what we need to do is make our solution have an extra zero at the right hand side, which is 240. Now let's consider the 0 0.6 multiplied by 40. Now the solution for this one is based on removing one of the zeros. In other words, pushing the decimal point back to get an answer of 24. But why is that? Well, 0 0.6 is 6 over 10, or 6 divided by 10. And when you divide numbers by 10, what you're doing is reducing the number by one place value. And we'll see that in the next two examples. So in this example, we'll ignore the decimal points for a moment and consider it as 12 multiplied by 5. Now, 12 fives are 60. We've got one decimal point in the first number, another decimal point in the second number. Let's rewrite that. So we've got 1.2 multiplied by 0 0.5. Now, because it involves two decimal places together, what we'll do is move our decimal point in the 60 two places to the left. In other words, make it smaller. So our answer's got a decimal point to the left of the 6 and becomes 0 0.6. So does that make sense? I guess another way we can look at this is 0 0.5 multiplied by 1.2. And we should know that 0 0.5 is a half. So we're working out a half of 1.2. Now that makes a bit more sense. So a half of 1.2 is equal to 0 0.6. In the next example, well, let's look at the 8 and the 3 first of all. So 8 multiplied by 3 is equal to 24. Let's now extend 3 to become 300, like it is in the question, with two extra zeros. That means our answer will be 24 with two extra zeros, or 2,400. Now, when we're multiplying by 0 0.08, what we've got to keep in mind that really that's 8 over 100 if we convert it to a fraction. So we're dividing by 100 here. That's two zeros, which represents two places. So we can see we've moved the decimal point from 2,400 in two places to the left. And that means the final answer is 24. We'll now have a look at some problems involving division. So like before, it's wise to pause here, have a go for yourself, and then check the solutions to follow. The best way to look at these division problems is to do them in conjunction with our multiplication tables. So in the first one, we've got 32 divided by 4. So what we're going to do is look at our 4 times table. So we're looking down the list by adding 4 each time. So we can see all the multiples of 4 here, 5 4s are 20, 6 4s 24, etc. And eventually we'll come across the number that we're looking for, at least close to it if it involves a remainder. So ticking off the list, we can see that 32 divided by 4 will give us 8, because 8 4s are 32. So the answer for that division is 8. In other words, there are 8 4s that go into 32. Likewise, if we're doing 35 divided by 7, we look at the 7, that's what we're dividing by. So we'll look at our 7 multiplication tables. So it's 7, 14, we're adding 7 each time here. 4 7s are 28, and 5 7s are 35. So because it takes 5 7s to get to 35, in reverse, 35 divided by 7 is equal to 5. Now we won't go through the table for the last number, but if you were to work through your six times table, you would find that it takes eight sixes to get to 48. So 48 divided by six is eight. So in the next division problem, we've still got a 32 and a four, but some extra zeros at the end. 
So again, let's just consider 32 divided by 4, like we did with multiplication. We'll just remove the zeros at the right-hand side for the moment. And like before, we'll go through our list of the 4 times table to see how many times 4 goes into 32. But we know that solution from before. So 32 divided by 4 is 8. Going back to the original question, it's 3,200 divided by 4. So we can see we've got two extra zeros. And what we'll do is we'll place those extra zeros at the end of the 8, so we get an answer of 800. And that's basically because the number we're dividing by is actually 100 times greater than just 32. So in the next problem we've got 350, so 35 with a 0 at the end, and 70, so 7 with a 0 at the end. Let's first of all consider the numbers at the front, 35 divided by 7. Now we know that gives an answer of 5. Now with the extra zeros, what we're doing effectively is we've got 10 multiplied at the top, in other words 35 times 10, and 7 multiplied 10 at the bottom. Those two zeros can cancel, and we're left with a solution of just 5. So effectively what we've done is divided 10 by 10 to remove those zeros. In our last problem, we've got 48,000 divided by 60, and often it's easier to write divide by with a fraction line. It means the same thing. That way we can cross off common zeros. Remember what we're doing there is dividing by 10. So ignoring the zeros after the 8 for a moment, 48 divided by 6 is 8. Then we place the two extra zeros there, because remember it's not 48 dividing by 6, it's actually 48 times 100 divided by 6, a solution of 800. Here's another opportunity for you to pause and have a go at the question for yourself before we have a look at the solution following this slide. So reading through this question, we've got a speed of 90 kilometres per hour. So that means that we can do 90 kilometres in one hour, and assuming it's constant, which it tells us in the question it is, we can keep doing it. So what we can do is multiply that by 2 to work out how many kilometres we travel in 2 hours. Now we know in multiplication that 9 twos are 18, and then we can place the extra 0 at the end of that number, so the answer is 180 kilometres. Here's another question on rate, which you can pause and look at the solution which follows after this slide. In this question we're being asked to work out the speed in kilometres per hour for the car. So if you look at the quantity for speed, in this case kilometres per hour, we can re-express that as a fraction, kilometres over hour, because of the way it's written, kilometres per hour is the same as kilometres over hour. That's how we're going to work out the speed. So we know from the question that it travels 100 kilometres in 150 minutes. So we've got 100 kilometres. Now we haven't got hours though. What we've got is 150 minutes. So because it's in minutes, that will give us a speed in kilometres per minute. Now it's a matter of working out what 100 over 150 is, and that's not an easy calculation off the top of our head. What we can do is cancel the two zeros, which are at the right-hand side of the number, because that's like dividing by 10. And we can simplify that fraction, because 5 goes into both 10 and 15. 5 goes into 10 twice, giving us 2 on the top line and 5 goes into 15 three times. So as a fraction, it's two-thirds, and that's the speed in kilometres per minute. So how do we make that speed kilometres per hour? Well, we know that 60 minutes make up an hour. So this speed is going to be 60 times greater if we work it out in kilometres per hour. So we do that by going two-thirds multiplied by 60, and that'll be kilometres per hour now. Now there are a few different ways of doing this multiplication. One way you can do it is say, well, if it's dividing by 3, in other words thirds, we can say 3 goes into itself once and into 60 20 times. And now we've got 2 times 20, which is 40 kilometres per hour. So the final result for the speed is 40 kilometres per hour.
Here's a question on time difference between two clock faces. Pause here and see if you can work out the time and then have a look at the solution that follows. When working out time difference it's very important to know some basics of the clock and that is that there are 60 minutes in an hour and that's for the long hand, the minute hand to go around the clock and also between the numbers on the clock which represent the hours there are five minute markings. So there are five minutes between each of those numbers on the clock. We can see on the first clock on the left that the hour hand's not quite 10 o'clock yet, but the minute hand is pointing to 11. That means it's still five minutes to go to the hour. So it's 9.55. In other words, 55 minutes have passed and five more minutes to the hour, which will be 10 o'clock. The next one is past 11 o'clock. The hour hand's pointing to the 11, but the minute hand is pointing to the 8 just before the two, so not quite 10 minutes. So we're looking at the time gap between these two times. If we look at the first clock, the minute hand will go around one whole hour back to where it was again, and that takes 60 minutes. That'll take us through to 10.55, in other words, one hour later. Then what we need to do is see how far it takes us to 11.08. So because there's five minute gaps between the 11 and the 12, the minute hand will take five minutes there, another five minutes to the one. And then to get to the eight minute mark, that's three extra minutes. So five plus five plus three equals 13 more minutes. So the total time we're talking about is 60 plus 13, which is 73 minutes. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and have a look at our YouTube channel and our website for different resources that will help you to get through your honour.